on, whether you're looking to spruce up your laundry, fix your facade, or overhaul a whole apartment, you have come to the right place. Yeah, you certainly have. Our experts are here to help. Welcome back, renovating for profit founder Cherie Barber and auction day host and interior designer James Treble, the long suffering James Treble. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, mate? We're good. How are you? Very guys? Excellent. Good. Yeah. Great to have you in. All right, let's get into some questions because we've got some heavy questions for you tonight. Have we? Yeah. Oh, don't look yeah. at me. Like really going to stretch your talents, this yeah. one. Um, this first question is from Nina. She says, We're planning to renovate our two bedroom unit. We have some furniture, but it lacks storage. Any advice on how to make it look better? would be greatly appreciated. All right, so Neela has sent us some photos. Neela has a plain two bedroom apartment. Um, it's cosmetically um, tired. Mm -hmm. So uh, what she needs to do is a lick of paint would be Neela's first you know, solution to getting it. Yeah. Oh, that looks like, it. look, it's pretty cutting edge now, isn't it? Yeah. So a lick of paint there, you reckon? I definitely lick her paint, yeah, and she needs to get rid of the carpet. The carpet is actually making her apartment look smaller. So um, you can see there she's got an old tired bathroom. The good thing is with Neela's apartment, everything is in good structural nick. Yeah, it does so look pretty good. What kitchen, about the kitchen? The kitchen's got great bones, looks starting to look a little bit dated, mm. and her balcony definitely needs a little bit of love, but the, you're very limited with what you can do to a balcony. Mm. So here's some examples of a renovation that I did last year, very similar to Neela's apartment. This was a low-budget cosmetic renovation. Um, it was only about 15000 to do the whole apartment, so affordable. Mm. Uh, you can see there that I've just painted, mm. I ripped up the grungy carpet, I've installed the um, water proof laminate floorboard so that makes the apartment look bigger and the biggest thing there is I've strategically wallpapered one wall so there's a little bit of wow factor going on at not a huge expense bedrooms you can see just some basic updates paint lighting curtains off the shelf curtains mm. the floorboards are continuing right throughout this was the master bedroom in that particular apartment you can see that I've wallpapered that wall so for design continuity we've got the same wallpaper going on through a small apartment some mirrored robes to bounce yeah. the light around. Like these are all basic yeah, stuff it, that anybody it similar, can do. It's a similar era of yeah. apartment, isn't mm. it? The one that you... Um... Kitchen was cosmetically refreshed with laminate paint. And you're keeping prices down by doing this sort of stuff? There's, there's yeah. nothing too much of a headache there for, for someone's bank balance? No, definitely not. As I said, that was a $15,000 mm. apartment for the whole apartment. So mm. that's very affordable. It's like, not like somebody's going out and getting a $100,000 loan, which in that case, it would have been overcapitalizing for that property. You can see the balcony here. This is one that I did last year. Um, very similar to Neela's apartment. All I did was just paving painted the floor in the balcony. Yeah. And you're allowed to do that in most strata bodies but you can't paint all the external bricks often just giving those bricks a high pressure water clean yeah, can actually work wonders it's exactly what i thought when you said when it looked at because it looked like quite a lot of like water mildew or just stains yeah. from being outside from dust so just high pressure cleaning that everyone should be doing that now because it will transform the space already but i love talking about the the paint on the that in that case it was a pebble crete you can still use that yeah. uh, paving paint on there and just adds contrast and it will really elevate the look of the space and a really easy thing to transform the space is adding layers and you did that with curtains and people forget that just curtains and putting the railing longer on the windows and wider you can transform the shape of a window if it's an odd shape you can make it look higher by putting the railing higher on the wall and you don't make the window too small you allow the railing longer than the window so that the the heavy curtains sit on either side of the window and that way you've got more light coming through but the window looks larger but behind those curtains on either side is wall not window yeah, I always do that, and particularly I, I love your point about putting the curtain rod higher because it means you don't have to alter your curtains yeah, you if you're buying off-the-shelf yeah. curtains from places like IKEA. So you just saved yourself a couple of hundred bucks in alterations there. So smart, you two. I, I just want to get back to the um, the painting the floor on the balcony. Mm. Like, what sort of colours do you use for that? There's paving paint colours in there already, but if right. you use just a neutral, if you use like a charcoal tone, it will go with most colour schemes. So you think in your wardrobe, you girls, and maybe this debonair Chris, you'll have black and you'll have white because those two tones go with everything, okay? And grey is the similar colour. It goes with most tones. So a deep charcoal or a medium charcoal will usually go with most bricks on the home so you're not going to do something that's too out there 
there and then it just lets the outdoor furniture and some white pots in plants pop. Yep. <laughs> and paving paint never looks good in um, light colours. Like you've got to think it's it's a, an area that's under your feet. Mm. So dirt on shoes. So darker colours always camouflage. Especially that one. It, was an, it didn't have a roof on it, that balcony, if it looked right. So um, Nina's apartment looked like it should just, it, it, it will naturally get dirty just from mm. rain or dust mm. from being outside. So she, uh, it'll be easy to look She after. also said that she's a little sh um, short on, uh, on storage space. Is yeah. there anything that can be said there in terms of um, yeah. ways to fix that up? Absolutely. So she's got this really long wall in her lounge room. So what she should do is some floating cabinetry. Like Neela could go to places like Caboodle, like Bunnings, grab some off-the-shelf Caboodle cabinets, anchor those to the wall. Um, she's got a masonry wall, so that'll be fine. She won't need to brace it behind. Mm -hmm. And she could just go and get some off-the-shelf laminate bench tops um, and put those in there. She's got a whole heap of storage in her lounge room, and it's not going to affect the space. It'll actually make her space look quite designer. Comprehensive stuff there, I think. So easy. Um, we, we've got another <laughs> uh, question here from Fran. She's thinking of removing the timber finials and fretwork from the facade of her house. Should she do it? Okay, well, I've had a look at Fran's house. So Fran's got a suburban house. I think this one is in Sydney's western suburbs. And she's thinking, well, should I move the finials and fretwork, which is all the decorative um, little bits and bobs you see on the top there. This is a house that I did. This is one of my really early renovations. I must have done it about 11 or 12 years ago. Very similar, a brick house. What I did here is I actually rendered the house. But looking back on this now, I think that I did keep um, the finial there. But I think looking back, I probably should have taken the finial yeah. off because What's important for me, when you're renovating a facade, your house has got to have one theme, one personality. Like yep. multiple personalities never did anybody any good and exactly no, the same thing that. with your house. <laughs> so I think Which in Fran's case, her house would really benefit from a cement render. It yeah. would modernise it and make it not look like it was from the 70s or 80s. So I would be inclined to take the finials off. I Even agree. if she doesn't render, just taking the finials off will modernise so it. So for people not quite catching, that dark little point that's sticking up on the far left, that's the finial and in the home that we've got of Fran it's also got all that fretwork which is the little timber pieces in the gable end on the right hand side above the window so they were added because this is all mock federation and it was a really popular thing to do in the late 70s and 80s and they were everywhere but it's just decorative and by removing those and updating the color scheme and there's not a lot of brickwork on the front of Fran's home no. I think that she could render that for you know a couple of grand and, and completely transform the facade and really because look at this house it's a house attached to a garage door mm. and it's all about that garage door and if you remove those little details and actually go p render the walls but do darker I think you'll have a stronger contrast and I think it will help balance the front of the home and then you can get rid of those finials and little details because they're a bit dated yeah definitely the color schemes letting the house down it looks like it's from the 70s and 80s and look there's nothing wrong with it but if she wants to catapult the property value mm. probably needs some external paint as well. right. um, and Chris honest that. question have you ever thought so much about removing your finials I haven't no, I'm, right. I'm gonna be honest I learned that word for the first time tonight. <laughs> All right, we'll be told. Go. James, <laughs> quickly, the laundry can be one of the hardest working but um, least loved rooms. It is in the, the house. least loved. You know, how many people do have amazing kitchens and they have great bathrooms but they forget the laundry? And I just wanted to show you some great spaces to be able to understand how to create space. So, this is a normal freestanding tub with a stainless steel bowl and a little bit of splashback behind, and it's pretty damn boring. Now, adding a bit of cabinetry with a drop in 45 litre tub, letting that bench run over the top, and a front loading washing machine lets you have bench space above and bench space is gold. When I'm styling homes for, uh, you know, for sale and doing them for display homes, I don't put washing machines in. I put hampers in the space where the washing machine goes. And just collections of decorative items. I've got a little Anne there putting pegs in a glass bowl, a couple of towels. You can make the space styled to make it look quite interesting. So here's one. It's got some splashback around there. Great storage to fold the kids' clothes and the washing machine would obviously go inside. But I can put a, a hamper, a little, a little basket inside with a couple of cushions, put some nice objects, put a nice soap dispenser put some nice little um, neutral finishes on top and all of a sudden it looks more exciting. This one we've got space for a washing machine and dryer, huge amount of bench space so this is great for a busy family but putting some nice wicker baskets in there all of a sudden it's a nice woven element and making it look textual and it's gotten a nice and balanced. A few flowers and this is one of my favourites, this is a recent home I've done, beautiful handmade tiles in subway tiles. Mm. This looks like some, better than some people's kitchens and why can't it because it's a room that you don't want to go in. Who puts a hand up if they love, I love washing clothes, bet you don't but it can look like a beautiful space and when you're selling You've gone to so many houses, you finally come to one that's got a great looking laundry like that, a little bit of tribal basket underneath. You will remember this house, you'll linger longer 
You know that I love to say that, Chris. And you will <laughs> fall in love with this house and guess what? They're going to buy yours and spend more money than other people's and it's so important in this market. James, I've known you for about five years now and I've yes. just discovered you have a laundry fetish. I think I do. <laughs> You've outed me on national television, but guess what? It's an important fetish to have and you can have a good looking laundry. I'll own up to that. Well, it would take more than that to make my laundry look good. I think, <laughs> I, I think I need some wine. Yeah, and stuff and yeah. Maybe a handsome man in there actually doing my laundry for me. Okay. That would make me much more excited I'll about my I laundry do about situation. That. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, James and Cherie. Great to have you with us as always. Thank you.